Well, Christians know the three parts of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The last one, says Pastor Vlad, is the key to miracles, and yet Christians don't know him as well as we should. Vladimir Sovchuk, known as Pastor Vlad, is an author, social media influencer, and pastor of Hungry Gen Church in Washington State. With a vision to bring people closer to God, Pastor Vlad also wants to bring attention to who he calls the most forgotten member of the Trinity. In his book, Host the Holy Ghost, Pastor Vlad wants you to not only know the role of the Holy Spirit in your life, but also develop a meaningful relationship with Him. All right, well, I'm so happy to share that Pastor Vlad is with us now, all the way from Portland, right? Uh, Washington State. Washington. Washington State. I was close. close. I was close. close. Oh, my goodness. It's so great to have you. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You, Ashley. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, let's get into your story. You are a fourth generation pastor. You were born in a communist, communist country. A lot of your family members, ancestors, were persecuted because of their faith. Maybe what are some things that you can share with us that they faced because of their Christianity? So uh, four generations ago, my great-grandfather, when he became a Christian uh, for preaching the gospel and refusing to abide by the, by the rules of the communism, he was uh, eventually put into jail. And so his sentence was 10 years, but he was released after five years. And uh, he was brutally beaten shortly after that. And he suffered and died as a martyr. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then my parents as well had to be baptized at night wow. uh, during winter. And mm -hmm. the church meetings, they had to switch 15 minutes before the church service so the KGB spies wouldn't be able to catch them. And so that's pretty much the, the family that I came from. And so I'm very fortunate to them to give us that foundation mm -hmm. that serving Jesus is not just the blessings, but sometimes it comes with persecution. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when did you come over to the States? How old were you? So I was 13, 13, 13 years of age. And okay. I moved to the United States, 1999. Okay, so I'm sure that was a little bit of culture shock for you. Did you speak English at that point? No, I didn't speak any English, okay. and I felt like my whole world collapsed on me because not mm -hmm. only I didn't speak English, um, I, because of the optical nerve damage during my birth, I had migraine headaches. Wow. Every time my head get exposed, gets exposed to the sun, I would have really bad headaches. And on top of that, I got bullied. Mm -hmm. I was made fun of. I didn't speak any English. My uncle just started the church, and the church was um, this charismatic church, so I was persecuted and rejected by the Slavic, the Russian people as well, wow. on top of that. And just all the insecurities surfaced. I was extremely shy, was very scared of people. And so um, actually one of my prayers at the age of 13 was for God to cause an accident so that I will die. Wow. I really felt like the world would be a better place with me not in it. But um, thank God that God didn't answer that prayer. Mm -hmm. Instead, I started to get to know the Lord, lock myself every single day, Monday through Friday after school, because I didn't have any friends. Mm -hmm. And I would just wail, just pray to God, cry out, complain to Him. <laughs> and I started to encounter Him in a very personal way. He revealed to me that I'm not what I see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I am what I see in the mirror of His Word. Mm -hmm. And my headaches were gone. He healed me supernaturally of my headaches. Wow. And then this self-esteem thing that I felt really bad about myself was really, it's almost like was subdued by his presence. Mm -hmm. And at 16, I became a youth pastor. Oh my gosh, 16, 16 years yeah. old. Yeah. And you've been in ministry ever since. Since 16, yeah. Wow. And what is the, the, the name of your church that you pastor it's now? Called, it's actually, I named our youth group Hungry yeah. Generation. Wow. Never thought it's going to be anything. And then <laughs> the main youth group outgrew the main church by like four times after I got yeah. to know the Holy Spirit as a person. Wow. And and uh, see, so yeah, it's, it's hungry generation. That is absolutely amazing. And you obviously talk about the Holy Spirit is the forgotten member of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? I think that because it's the Holy Spirit, you know, when we think of Jesus, we think of either chosen Jesus from chosen mm -hmm. movie or the yeah. film Jesus. Mm -hmm. When we think of the heavenly father, we all have a father or we know fathers. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, even the word ghost or the word spirit for many people, their mind goes right away into a dove, oil, wind, fire. And we don't realize is he is a person, he is God and he is here. Yeah. Jesus ascended to heaven and he said another will come who will take his place. We can have the same relationship with the Holy Spirit yeah. that disciples had with Jesus. He's here now. We can have a communion. We can have a relationship with him. But we cannot do that if we keep seeing him as a dove experience, mm. tingling, feeling, fire, miracles, power. Yeah. If we see him as power, we'll use him. 
Wow. If we see him as a person, he will use us and we can get to know him. Wow. Well, what was your personal journey? You talk about this in the book, and I believe your wife had a huge part to play in you getting getting to that point of recognizing Holy Spirit as a person. Can mm -hmm. you share a little bit about so that? I grew up in a uh, like an Assemblies of God church. I'm, I'm still part of the Assemblies of God. So I received the gift of speaking in tongues at the age of 14. So that was pretty much my ceiling of getting to know the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I thought. I treated him more like a um, something that I use. I speak in tongues versus a person that I know. When I married my wife and she would constantly refer to the times she will encounter the presence of God. When I would say encountered the presence of God, I would say, you know, I felt the presence of Jesus. I felt the presence of God. I never mentioned the Holy Spirit. Mm. He, I didn't know him personally. She always talked about him like actually someone she knows. And so I was in youth ministry already for about 10 years. I didn't see any growth, Ashley. I didn't see baptisms for a while. I mean, I could count how many people got healed in 10 years on one hand. Um, yeah. Things were really stuck. And I felt like I was that lame man in the book of Acts who had legs but didn't walk in them. Mm -hmm. I had the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I didn't walk in Him. I didn't know Him personally. Yeah. And so in my desperate pursuit to see a breakthrough in our ministry, I went to another country, sowed a large seed. I felt the Lord lead me to do that. And I asked this pastor to pray for me so I can get a breakthrough. He said, Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so then I took six months and really my prayer was Jesus revealed the Holy Spirit to me. And when He became real, the ministry changed. My life changed. I mean, explosive miracles started to take place. The youth mm -hmm. group went from like 30 kids to outgrowing the church four times and Gosh. it just became my journey in the last um, 10 years. And in fact, one of those times I was in the store and this was about 10 years ago. Yeah. And as I was in the store, I, the Holy Spirit paints an image in my mind that I will have a, a son and his name will be Samuel. Mm -hmm. the crazy part is that we go to the doctors and the doctors tell us we cannot have children. And so 10 years ago, I got that vision. I felt the like Holy Spirit gave me that. And, and my wife is due any moment, pretty much, I think this week, Yay! we're going to have so baby boy uh, Samuel. That's so, so amazing. Yeah. The Holy Spirit makes a difference. As you said, we're praying that she waits to go in labor until you get back, right? That's right. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Well, we, we just have a few minutes left, but I just wanted to ask you this last question. You talk about in your book that we get the Holy Spirit by salvation, but the Holy Spirit gets us through surrender. Can you just briefly talk about that? When we yield... To walk in the Holy Spirit, we have to talk to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When we yield to the Holy Spirit every, sing every single day, what begins to happen? He begins to get more of us. We cannot really get more of Him. God doesn't give us the Spirit in parts or compartments. Mm -hmm. He gives us all of Him. But when we yield to Him, we become more aware of the Holy Spirit that we have in us. Wow. Well, Pastor Vlad, gosh, we could just talk for hours, but thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing with your church, through your ministry, and thank you so much for your book as well. Appreciate it. Thank of course. You. All right, everyone. Well, uh, you can learn even more in Pastor Vlad's brand new book. It's called Host the Holy Ghost. It is in stores nationwide. And how can people stay in touch with you? Uh, PastorVlad.org or okay. social media. Just type Vlad and usually my account will show up first. Yeah. Okay. Awesome.